most challenging thing about making Priest was putting the world together. You don't know what year it is, what age it is. It's rough and dirty, but there's hope. It's really like dreamland. I did a lot of learning to ride on the, on the motorcycle at Dodgers Stadium. It was all manageable in a massive car park in Los Angeles. And then they took them out to the actual desert, and it was a slightly different story. There were a couple of accidents, so at that point, we were absolutely not allowed to ride them without these training wheels, <laughs> which was really humiliating, because I'd, I'd, spent, I'd spent all this time learning to ride this bike. I mean, you could ride it in a straight line, but we'd have to turn these very, very wide circles to get the bike to turn around. So we actually shortened the front of the wheelbase, again, back a little bit closer so they had more stability and control. And then we digitally extended the bike back out, doing a digital front end for that so the bikes retained their original design. And they did the work so well that you can't tell. I mean, no one knows that the bikes are half CG. It's pretty great. Nicely done. The vampires are definitely more monster-esque, which is so amazing. They're an all-original beast. They're creatures. They're animals. They're insects. It was not an easy set to work on. It was dangerous to move around on, and it was dark, and you'd constantly smash your head against some rock that's, you know, jutting out. I've always been a big fan of westerns, particularly spaghetti westerns, and I love that they've sort of created this almost supernatural-like world, this weird version of the western. And that was something that I also wanted to take from. So we've got the city of Jericho, and when they turn up there, it's like a cowboy town, but in some weird parallel world. And we actually built it at, at a place called Melody Ranch, which is a really well-known, very historical cowboy ranch. But when we first went there, everybody's looking at this place and we're all going, you know, it doesn't really belong in the world of concrete cities. When we shot Black Hat Siege of Jericho with Carl Urban's character, we did a take with Carl where he was listening to a piece from Mozart's Requiem. Played the actual piece on the set and miraculously, <laughs> through the power of good planning by our AD department, he would go through the stuff and the explosions would just happen almost perfectly in time with the music. It was almost just funny. You know, and it worked out great. And Carl wasn't sure about the conducting thing, and then he looked at it and he saw the explosions happening on set, and we all just started laughing. We just thought it was so great. And like, okay, that goes in the movie. One of the big challenges for us was to try and find deserts that had no vegetation, which sounds crazy, but actually most of deserts are full of vegetation destroyed. We shot on some amazingly desolate locations that are just so beautiful. I'd never seen landscape like that before. But there were a couple of days when we had what's called whiteouts, where the sand and wind was so dense that we had to turn the cameras off and we had to take shelter. There's a lot of dust on this and a lot of grime, and I'm kind of the only girl that really experiences all of that. And it's funny, because the boys, you know, the dirtier they get, the better they look. So we can actually have shots of motorcycles pulling up to the train and people jumping on the train and seeing people on top of the train while it's actually moving. We trained sort of for like nine months to get me physically fit enough for the job. I really wanted to do as much of the action as I could. Priest, he has this incredibly beautifully designed knife. It's just really elegantly designed, really, really beautiful. It's silver and has these two blades at the push of a button springs open and separates into two knives. What we built here is a prop that, when manipulated properly, it goes from one knife to two. So now he can throw one at somebody and still have a weapon to defend himself with. Okay. 
that I start to read. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Your words mean nothing to them, priest. And the camera comes round behind me, and you look at the Bible, and you see that there, in actual fact, are no words. And what there are are throwing stars. That becomes one of the signature kind of shots of the movie. So that idea that all the weapons transform was really interesting. Each of the actors had to learn how to use different weapons in the movie, and Maggie Q's priestess character has a rosary that becomes a rope dart weapon. It's originally a wushu weapon. It looks like a rosary, and then it deploys into a sort of long rope. And then at the end of that, you've got the cross that's sharp as a knife. It's a throwing, stabbing, twisting, pulling weapon, which is very, very difficult to use. and takes years to become a master of the rope darts. And so Maggie, you know, worked a lot with her stunt double trainer. The one I was training with had a tennis ball at the end of it, so I would um, stab myself in the face. But she sort of wields that and is able to, you know, take guys off their motorcycle, <laughs> slice people into pieces. So it's, it's really cool. Just so freaking cool that we couldn't not do it. And Max made a gun that worked. You load it just like a real gun. It actually fires blanks. It's very, very loud and very, very impressive when it goes off. It's like 10 pounds, the real one. And we've had scenes where I, I have to hold it up for the entire scene, and you can just see, like, towards the end, I'm just. It's slowly dropping. So we ended up having to cut the scene in half because literally after like two takes, I could not hold it up for the life of me. There was sort of an idea that the priest bike was like the, the weapons that are being handed to an elite force. Only priests have these weapons. We wanted these bikes to feel like you were sitting on a jet engine. I mean, they're the size of an airplane. It's kind of funny, you see me on it. You know, once I straddle it, I, I mean, I disappear. But it's very cool looking, so that's um, the point. It's a new experience for me, flying off trains and swinging around and getting bruised. The more bruised you get, the uh, more authentic. We had a few um, bumps and scrapes on the way. Uh, this one sequence with Paul's hanging on to uh, the side of the train. I'm supposed to stomp on his hand, which obviously elicits a, a great deal of pain. Well, we did it on the first take, and I missed his hand completely, but the heel of my toe just on my boot caught his finger, and he just was like, ah, fuck! And I'm thinking, my God, he's such a good actor. And, <laughs> you know, of course, the set comes to a complete standstill, and you just feel like a complete moron. Everyone thinks, oh, good one, you just broke his hand. Thankfully, that didn't happen, but that's all part of it. Yeah, no, it'll be great because, you know, remember, the whole world's racing by in the desert and everything. The train sequence is intense. I mean, you've got to go out with a bang on a movie like this because they're doing such a wonderful job action-wise, story-wise. It's pretty incredible. Hopefully, audiences want to go back to the world of priests. I hope that they've had a good time, that they've felt like they've been taken to a world that's unique and textured and interesting, but there's a lot of other places to take in.